Hello and welcome back. I am starting a series where I'm gonna be talking about some financial terms and explaining reasons why we're using them in order to evaluate companies and their respective stocks obviously. So things like uh, price to earnings ratios, uh, price per, uh, earnings per share, uh, price to book, like what, what do these things mean and why do they matter and how do they affect us? And so Many people may not be very well aware of what these things are and uh, they may kind of strike fear in their hearts just listening to the terms, just hearing the terms. But um, they're actually pretty simple as long as you understand some simple concepts about a stock and some uh, financial aspects of the stock. And uh, to start off this uh, series and uh, this uh, kind of uh, video, I would like to talk a bit about uh, earnings per share and P ratio. So pro probably the most uh, the most uh, most people are actually used to hearing the P ratio, which is um, if I'm just using the notes here on my uh, account uh, for from Coifin. So P ratio is basically price to earnings. This is pretty simple to remember is price to earnings ratio. And uh, what does that mean? So a ratio obviously is um, explaining the association between two terms. So in this case, we are trying to associate price to earnings. And so a typical way to associate things is division. So for instance, uh, if uh, the whole thing is 100, then you have 10%. So that would be 10 divided uh, by 100. So 10%. So we use these kinds of ratios to, de to define, you know, how, how much of the whole pie we're getting, for instance. So in this case, we're taking a look at the price of the stock. In this, uh, in this example, the price to earnings ratio. We're adding the price of the stock and we divide it to the earnings, basically, in order to see how valuable the price, that we, the price we got is to the current earnings of the company. And so that matters because we, if the earnings of the company are way, way lower in comparison to the price of the stock that we paid for, then we are getting an overvalued stock. If it's lower, then we are potentially getting a fairly priced stock or an undervalued stock, which, which is what we want to get. Now, pr the price of the stock is basically a price per unit. So price of the stock equals to the price per share. So it's one share. Right when we're talking about the price of uh, of a share, and so in this case in Alibaba right now the price is one hundred and eleven dollars. Now, when we're taking a look at earnings, earnings is basically the net income uh, that the company made in the uh, in the in the income statement basically in the last twelve months, the last fiscal year. And so, if we take a look at the earnings, the earnings is represents the whole equity of the company, so it represents every share, every outstanding share of the company. Now, since we have one share that we're cal calculating from and it's, it's easier and we, we could use the market cap, but uh, in this case, it's, uh, we're just trying to understand how P ratio works. Uh, in, um, in this case, so we're using price per share, so we want to be getting earnings per share, not the whole earnings uh, that the company makes. So we want to be getting earnings per share because we're examining the relationship of price per share so to earnings. So earnings per share, we want to find the earnings per share value here. So let me save that. And now I'm going to go back to my uh, trusty <laughs> application here and take a look at the income statement of the company. And so if I go to the income statement of the company and uh, let's take a look at uh, the fiscal year 2021. Um, over here, let me find the net income. Yes, it's uh, 20, let's say 23, about 23 billion over here. Now, this is 23 billion for the income for, uh, you know, for the whole company, basically. So for every share of the company, representing every share of the company. So let me write it down to, uh, to my notepad here. So the earnings, the earnings for 2021 were what? Um, for 23 billion, 23 billion, 23 billion. Now, in order to discover the earnings per share now, we simply need to find the amount of shares that are outstanding, obviously, and uh, use the use the full earnings in order to divide it with a share, with the amount of shares, and get the earnings per share, right? So, if we go back 
to our original snapshot here, we will see that the, ser the outstanding shares is 2.71 billion. So the, the shares, the whole shares of the company, let me write this here, outstanding shares, outstanding shares of the company are 2.71 billion shares. So now what is, earn what is the earnings per share here? So the earnings were 23 billion and the outstanding shares are 2.71 billion. So it's simply a division of 20, uh, 23 to 2.71. And um, if we use a calculator, we'll see that 23 divided by 2.71 is 8.48. Uh, so 8.48 dollars. So the earnings per share is 8.48 dollars in this case. Now, we go back to our P ratio. P ratio now is basically, as we examine, is price per share, because price is per share, to earnings per share, right? That should make a lot of sense now. So that would be what? 111, uh, sorry, 111 dollars, about, I'm just using about values, uh, divided by 8, let's just use the exact one here. Actually, let's use the exact everywhere. Right now it's 32. So, if we go back to the calculator and do 111.32 divided by 8.48, that would give us 13.12. 13.12. So, 13.12 is the current uh, earnings per share. And uh, so you can use this, uh, this uh, value, and actually this one, this shows uh, um, the last 12 month period, of, uh, period over here, which was a slightly different if you, uh, if you took a look at the earnings here, but it's uh, fairly close, because uh, this, calcul this calculates actually the current one over here, the last 12 months, as you can see, it's LTM, but the concept remains, it's, it's using the same exact method. And, um, yeah, it's just getting, if you go to the net income, it's just getting this value instead, which is slightly lower. And this is why the, the, the amount was different. So this is 19 billion. So um, probably if we go back here, so that would be 19 billion uh, earnings. So it would be basically 19 divided, divided by 2.71 equals 7. And that would be... 100, let's do it quickly, 100 divided by 7, and that gives us 15.85, which is basically what you're seeing here. Let me go back. See, 15.8. It's exactly the same we found here. So, uh, I mean, we use the, um, you know, rounded values, but uh, it re the concept remains. It's, uh, it's 15.8, basically, in the last 12 months. And uh, similarly, you can calculate the forward PE, for instance, just by using forward pro projections for income. So this it's a, it's the same concept. Concept is the forward, uh, the twelve month, um, twelve months later, basically what we're expecting from the company. And so the company right now has a fifteen PE, and um, it's expecting to go down to twelve point three PE. Now, now that we understand how price to earnings works and uh, what earnings per share is and how these things are calculated, uh, you should be able to basically just listen, to, uh, just hear to hear the, the term price to earnings and just refer to that, like the price of the share divided by earnings per share, because it's we're, we're talking about share units. Remember, you can, you can basically get the market cap and calculate the same thing, because market cap is what? Outstanding shares divided by shares, by the number of shares. So you could use the market cap to do the same calculations, really. And do not, do not have to calculate the earnings per share in that case. It's the same concept. You basically find the relationship between earnings and uh, the price of, of the share. So now we have, a, we have a multiple, what we're calling a multiple. So this is basically how many times earnings we have to pay in order to get a share, right? Because we have a multiple of 15. So what does that mean? It means that the, the, the price of the stock is 15 times more than the earnings per share. So this is a multiple, this is called a multiple. And to, we are basically paying a premium, that's what it means. We are paying a premium on, on top of what the company makes in earnings, and that's called the P ratio. And thus, as you can understand, the higher this uh, value is, the higher of a premium we are paying 
for the company. That's how it works and this is why it's important. And similar ratios occur with things like uh, cash flow, for example, which we calculate in previous videos that I have made, which is extremely, I think cash flow is generally speaking more important because it's less, e less easy to uh, kind of uh, mess with in the, in the statements because uh, there are tricks that are accounting tricks that can artificially like potentially blow up um, and ink, uh, earnings, but uh, with cash flow it's, it's tougher because there's like depreciation and things of that sort going on. So um, this, is, this is what you, you should be thinking now. How much of a multiple am I paying to buy a company based on its earnings? So am I willing to pay a 15x multiple, a 15 multiple for buying Alibaba here? So for a company like that, which is uh, you know massively growing, uh, for me, this is definitely a yes. I would, as I've mentioned, I have created a video about it actually, and I bought Alibaba myself. Uh, but uh, you should also be thinking similarly about other companies. Like, is it worth it for me to buy a company with a multiple of 50 if they are not growing really quickly, really fast? Probably not, if you are a value investor. Even if they are growing fast, a multiple of 50 could potentially be a very lucra luc lucrative value to pay for. So this is how you should be thinking about it, because this multiple is how much you are paying, basically. Now, as you can understand, if the company's uh, stock price falls, then the PE will fall, because it's uh, price to earnings, right? So prices, the price goes down, the whole PE goes down. And this is good for you, because you're going to be buying the company at a lower valuation. And so you, you want to be getting that, a lower stock value to buy. So this is how it works, and hopefully this uh, gives you an idea on how, of how to quickly or how to quickly calculate it. And uh, I mean, most most um, brokers and um, you know financial instruments contain these kinds of uh, uh, websites, contain these kinds these kinds of information already uh, you know generated for you. But it's still important to understand to understand how they are generated and why they are generated and why they are used, because that's the whole point here. I mean, we want to to use that, but not blindly use it. I mean, is, is there a reason why we're using it? Yes, there is. We're trying to evaluate how expensive a stock is based on the company's earnings. That's what, that's what it is. And so as long as we understand that, we can very quickly be like, okay, what is, what is the P ratio of the company? And uh, are, they, are they growing fast enough that it makes sense for me to pay that P ratio? That's, that's how you should be thinking about it. So that, that was the first video that I wanted to create, and there will be more. So let me know if you have uh, some specific, you know, some specific um, financial, uh, uh, you know, um, element, for example, that you'd like me to talk about and formula. Um, so, you know, I could create a video next, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed that and uh, learned a few things <laughs> if you were not aware of how that works. And if you did, please leave a like and uh, subscribe for more because there will be more about, uh, you know, about these kinds of topics. I really enjoyed talking about those. And uh, thank you for watching this. And uh, in the meantime, you can also take a look at uh, this video that I created about uh, Fidelity's uh, mutual funds and uh, how to pick uh, the, the top ones for your portfolio. Thank you for watching and I see you in the next video. Bye bye.